Good morning, everybody. Thank you for another wonderful opportunity to share the word of God with you. So we're doing this runs of lessons and teachings that focus on worshiping God and truth and spirit. Uh, the last time we met, I think we had a discussion about it and it challenged some of us our understanding of what really truth and spirit mean, worshiping God in that manner. So we're going to focus on worshiping God when we get together, when we encourage one another as brothers and sisters to come together and worship God and doing that in spirit and in truth. So that's what our focus is on today. We're going to take two Bible passages before I continue from Hebrew chapter 13, 15 to 16, if I may, please. So through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. From this passage, we can tell God likes to be pleased. And one way to do it is what the Bible is telling us now. Before I go ahead, we will take the second one from Fresh Chronicles, chapter 16, verses 23 to 25. It reads, sing to, sing to the Lord all the earth, tell of his salvation from day to day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples, for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And he is to be feared amongst all gods. So we know God is the God and God is the most to be feared if you put all the gods together. Now, I met Paul a few weeks ago and we were speaking about encouraging one another to, to church and why we do it. Then he brought a, a point that uh, you ask somebody, how did you go to church today? And the person says, well, wh wh where were you on Sunday? He said, well, I had to go to church. And Paul said, well, that shouldn't be the answer. If you had to go, it means you were in a way coerced or forced to do it. And if you are truly worshiping God in spirit and truth, then it should be out of your own volition, your own will to really do it. I understood that. This morning around maybe 6, 20, 6, 30, uh, a colleague asked me, I was writing down some things, asked me, um, what are you writing? And I said, well, I have this assignment um, this morning and um, because I have to go to church. Uh, maybe two seconds after, I'm like, what, what did you say? I said, okay, well, you know what? I, I get to go to church to worship God. Because Paul has said, because I, I, I understood, I probably find it difficult to grasp that, that concept. And maybe you too. So anytime I have the opportunity to share, to share the word of God, I, it's an opportunity for me to talk to myself also. So I think it's something that I have to really be engrossed in, to have that heart that is prepared and say, I'm doing this thing willingly for God and not because I have to do it. And that's what I actually did this morning when we had this discussion about two, three weeks ago. So if we worship God in spirit and we encourage one another to come, there are definitely some benefits, some good things that come out of it. And we should know we do this because God wants us to do it. God is pleased if we do these things for him. God is to be praised. You see a piece of equipment, it can be a watch or anything, an engineering piece of work, and you like it, and you, you admire it, and you even praise whoever made it. This person is a very great designer. We're giving people praise. Then if you juxtapose that to God being the all-knowing, an omniscient, omnipresent, who is the God of all, and he created that person who made that watch or that piece of engineering equipment, then how do you place God? It means God needs more praise than that. And if we come to church on Sundays, if we do that, it's one way we get opportunity to praise God. And imagine doing it together and not just you in your home or me in my home, but all of us giving God the praise that he deserves. There's no praise that will be more than this. And this is what we should be doing because we come here, we encourage one another to come so we can have this opportunity to praise God and praise him together. 
we do have reasons and excuses almost all the time to not come to church, to visit a family, to travel, to go to work. So many excuses. But the beauty in it, in all this, in the mix of all this, we, we still have the, the courage, the, the, the verb to say, I still want to go to church. I still want to go to church. And the Bible says we do so by encouraging one another so we can meet together. Because when we meet together, so many other things follow up. So I want us to focus on that. We're encouraging one another. It's not to be in a spirit of fear. My misinterpreted understanding of some passage in the Bible was um, in Philippians says, um, everyone should seek their own salvation with trembling and fear. Well, and Paul said again, the, 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 the right way should be reverence. You should seek to worship God with reverence. I say, yeah, that's, that, that's the thing. If, if we are doing it with trembling and fear, then it means we are under compulsion. But no, it's not, God is not that kind of God. God has not forced us to do anything. Um, he made us a free moral agents. We have the right to choose good or bad, right or wrong. We can do anything we want, anytime we want it. But because we love him and we want to worship him in truth and spirit, we say, well, I want to do this thing for God. And that's why we do it. When you read the passages in Acts chapter 2, after the Pentecost when people were baptized, so 3,000 were baptized on that day and they were added daily to the church. It's telling us of God's called out ones in Greek saying ecclesia, and that gives us this rare opportunity and privilege that God has called all of us together from the world and has brought us together as brothers and sisters where no, nothing counts. Nothing counts before that. Where you come from, race, color, religion, ethnicity, no, it does not matter. Once we come together, we are doing this because, you know, it pleases God. So in the same passage that we read, when we come to church, one other advantage is we get to have teaching and lessons. And so we get, imagine you don't come to church. There are a lot of things I would have personally missed because uh, there are certain teachings we do that deepens my understanding of what worshiping God, especially in truth, actually means. It says somewhere in the, in, in the Bible in 2 Timothy, rightly dividing the word of truth. I don't think so, but there are a lot more people who are here who, who, who do. If I don't try to make the effort to make people like that, then I, how would I be able to understand all these things? Of course, God is not the author of confusion. If you read the Bible, it has to have the same meaning, the same understanding from time immemorial to this time. But we do get it twisted sometimes. We do get it wrong sometimes. And that's why there are so many churches, there are so many different ways of doing things, but there's one God. So how can we have this so many different ways of doing things? If it's one, and he told you the same thing. So if we come together and worship God, we get to have this teaching and admonition. Paul told me my time was going to be 15 minutes. I'm not sure how I'm doing it. But the next point I want to go to, sharing together, benevolence. If we look at the same um, verses in Acts chapter 2, the verses 38 to 42, we hear of the Christians sharing together. And that is one, one beautiful thing that we could ever do for ourselves. A few months ago, I know Brother Eddie brought the idea of sharing with people in the community. And of course, if we can do this, then nothing beats this kind of act. And we know we're not doing it for ourselves, we're not doing it for name, but for God. And we know God is going to, going to be pleased because he's told us, yes, if we do these things sincerely and from our hearts, he will be praised. And so during the same time, you've read the story of Barnabas, a Levite who owned a piece of land on an island. I would assume having a property on an island should be very, very expensive out of his will and volition, out of his love for God and for people, he sold this piece of land and gave it to the poor and needy. This kind of thing 
the world would you understand it? The world might think probably you're, you're stupid. You don't know the use of your money. But people have done it. And people continue to do it. And one way we do this is when we meet together, not only in church on church on Sundays, but other gatherings when we come together as Christians. It was a very interesting moment for us when we came over to Australia to the church. And after church, we get a chance to sit and talk and have biscuits and tea. Because it doesn't really happen like that. Out of people's heart, out of love people have for others. If you go to the world, people are doing a lot of things because they know what they're going to get back from you. It's like a quid pro quo. I, I give you something, they give me something back in, in another way. He might not just give it to you straight up. I want this back. But I give you this thing um, one day before, you know, you know, can you, can you do that for me? And you think about it. Oh, I think he did that for me five, five, five years ago. Is that what he's asking, asking back for? Definitely he's asking back for that. But if you begin to show love to people who, who are poor, who have nothing, who are needy, out of our own will, when sometimes we know we're not getting anything back, when sometimes we know what we're giving out, it is the end of it. And we can do that. Then God will be happy with it. Because God says we Christians are the source of the earth. If we, if we lose our taste, then we, we use less. We probably could be trampled on under people's feet. But if we do these things, one thing we know, we are pleasing God. We, 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 we all try. I have my own problems. But it doesn't stop me from seeking to know God better. It doesn't stop me from learning to do more. Because God is not really looking at, yeah, continually working hard to please God. But it doesn't mean we are without sins. God's grace that is unmerited covers us if we, if we try our best to do what we can. And God, he, he, he's God of all understanding. He knows when we are weak and when we are strong, and he will support us when, when we are down. All these things we, we, we get if we convene together as brothers and sisters. Let's talk about prayers. The Bible says it's in James chapter 5, verse 16 says, uh, the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails, avails much. We do have problems in one way, one, one go-to area as Christians is to, is to pray to God, to, to intervene. We do have people here who are not physically, 100%, mentally, psychologically. People do go through different kinds of things. You just don't have the knowledge if they, if they don't tell you. But when we meet together like this, we, we have the, the time to actually pray for ourselves and for people outside. And we trust God that he does answer our prayers. Whichever way he chooses to answer it, whether we get something as an immediate response or something later. Or even, some, even sometimes nothing happens at all, but he's, he's God and he knows what he's doing. I've met people who, who are probably dying and they just want to die and that's what, that's what they're saying. And I've met those who say, yes, I could be dying, I could die, but my, my mind is on something, something higher, something God has promised. And if people could be down striking, they could have the whole, whole of the worst problem on their shoulders, and they can still smile at you because they, they, they have hope, they have hope in God that this, this earth is not our last place. It's just a port of call. There's the next place to go to. And so no matter what we're going through, no matter how hard it is, if you trust in God, if you worship him, if you come together like this, we get to have all of these benefits. When we're worshiping God in spirit, I just looked up for the Greek word for worship, and it says this, proskinio, and that word originally means to, to bow down or to lie prostrate or to kneel down before something in reverence. So that's like a true sign of worship. But we don't do that. We do all of this in our heart. We do not have to come and lie on the, on the ground for God. We do not have to bow down physically. 
to any image, to anything, but in our hearts, if we do the things we're doing, in truth and in spirit, then yes, we are worshiping God, and we're doing all these worship things that he wants us to do for us. So it's important we continue to encourage one another. If a brother has been missing for, for, for a few weeks and you don't know the obvious reason, of course you could, you could contact the person we haven't seen in church for, for, for a month or something. Oh, I've, I've been away. Oh, okay. It could rekindle other people's spirit. It could rekindle my spirit for, for me to know and feel that somebody thinks about me. Somebody, somebody wants the, the better for me and that uh, when I'm not coming to church, um, somebody's concerned. We are looking out for one another and we are encouraging one another. The Lord's Supper is one of the acts of worship we do when we come together, special on Sundays or on Sundays, I would say. And we know how important it is. It's the, it's the only way God, Jesus has said to use to, to, to remember him. is the only way. It's the only time and chance we have the opportunity to proclaim his death. The point is, when Jesus died, none of us was there. No. But what makes us believe that what the Bible accounts it is actually the truth? And that's one way of dividing well, the word rightly and also, also worshiping God in, in spirit. We didn't see that happen, but we do have the belief. And we are convicted fully that Jesus really died for our sins. He died at some time. And he did it for our sins. And we come here on Sundays. We get a chance to actually dine with the Lord. So if you're not coming to church, if you're not encouraging one another to come to church, means we are going to miss out on this one. So as you are trying to worship God in spirit and in truth, we are focusing on encouraging one another to meet in together. So I'm going to try as, as hard as possible, rem remind myself constantly that I, I come to church because I get to worship God, not because I have to worship God. I come to church because I get to praise God, not because I have to praise God. If I have to praise God just like that, it might not be coming out of my, of my heart. But if I get to worship God and I still want to do it, then no matter the circumstances, if I can, I will make it to church because it's coming from my heart and I'm doing it for God. Later on, we're going to have the teachings. And there'll be more deliberations on some of these things by Paul. But it's really important to remember God, worship him in truth, dividing the word rightly, and in spirit, where everything we do is coming from our heart because we know God loves to be pleased. God loves us. And we just have to love him back. But the point is God, he loved us first. He is the first lover before us. So if he loved us first, we are loving him back because he's pleased with it, because he deserves our praise. So encouraging one another, let's all try as much as we can to make this possible. When we come to church and have all these songs and hymns, and they speak to us in many different ways. If you leave church and don't meet the brethren, sometimes it could take a week and you haven't really had a really positive, you know, godly thing. You might have heard a lot of things about politics and so many things about. If you don't meet a brother, it's more than likely you probably wouldn't hear anything about God the entire week unless you're with your family or coming to church. And any other opportunity we have to meet as brethren, the Bible is encouraging us, God is saying, Jesus is saying, we have to do it because with these things, he is pleased. Thank you, shall we pray? We thank you God our Father for, for this time and opportunity. We thank you for your words, for your works, for your acts, for your kindness, for your mercy. 
We thank you for inciting us to understand better how to worship you in truth and in spirit. Wherever we fall short, and whenever we fall short, we pray that you supply us with that extra strength that we need to get back on our feet and do the things that please you because we know at the end of the day our sights are not just on earth our sights are to live on earth in a pleasing manner to you and one that you've promised us eternity where there's no cry or sorrow there's no weeping there's no death we thank you for listening to our prayers in Christ's name we pray with thanksgiving amen <laughs>